Hey, folks, glad you could be here. Now, if you're a regular listener, you kind of know that we, we usually talk about uh, similar things. We talk about the nervous system, the digestive system. We talk about diet, nutrition. But there are other issues that can affect your health. And I want to talk about something that we, we probably never touched on. Well, I know we've never touched on before. And this is something that's more hazardous to your health than obesity or smoking. So what the heck could be more hazardous to your health than obesity and smoking? I kind of threw this out to, to the crew here at the station, and I was asking them that question. And they were like, well, it could be, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, driving drunk. It could be, uh, I don't know, talking bad to a law officer, somebody said, but they said it in a different way. But the truth of the matter is it's loneliness. Loneliness and social isolation can actually be more, be more dangerous to your health than obesity or smoking. There's an estimated 42.6 million Americans over the age of 45 that suffer from chronic loneliness. And it, the, cen- the census reveals that 25% of the U.S. population lives alone. Now, there's a difference between being alone and being, so- being alone and loneliness and a difference between loneliness and social isolation. So loneliness means that you're around people, but you feel disconnected from people or you're not around people, you feel disconnected from people. Social isolation means you're just not around people. So there's a big difference there. However, the symptoms many times are the same if it's an issue. Now, living alone is not a big deal. A lot of people live alone. They're very happy. They like peace and quiet. I know a lot of friends of mine. I was talking to a friend of mine who's married, and uh, I gave him uh, uh, some tickets the other day, and his wife and his grandson went to a ball game, and he said it was actually kind of a circus. And he says it's actually kind of nice. He says because I got to just stay home by myself for a few hours. And he says it was just nice to have some downtime. It wasn't a bad thing. It was just a nice to have some downtime. So being alone is not necessarily a bad thing, but when it becomes loneliness, then it becomes a- an issue. And that's something that we have to address then. Loneliness is associated with high blood pressure, higher risk of diseases such as heart disease, stroke, dementia, uh, depression, lower survival rates for breast cancer. There's some big issues there. Two recent uh, meta-analysis. Now, if you ever see this word meta-analysis, M-E-T-A, meta-analysis, what that means is somebody took a bunch of studies of a similar topic, in this case, loneliness or social isolation, and they looked at it and they came up with their own opinion based on what the studies said. Well, most of the studies say this, and so a meta-analysis is kind of reviewing other studies. Uh, it revealed that loneliness is more hazardous to your health than obesity, raising your risk of early death by as much as... raising your risk of early death by 50% and compared to the risk of smoking 15 cigarettes a day. That's some crazy stuff right there. So many people have this problem because after work, they go home and many times work is your your social network and you go home and there's nothing to do. And there's some nights I go home and I just, you know, if I'm heading home, I'll just stop at a store or something, do a little shopping. I'll go for a walk at night sometimes. Um, you know, just, you know, listen to some, I like comedy, so I'll put on some comedy and listen to some comedy as I'm going for a walk. Being alone and loneliness are two different things because many times life can get crazy. There might be meetings, there might be family events, there might be, if there's children involved, you got to raise the children, put the children to bed. So there's two different things there. But loneliness doesn't just affect your mind. It can also have a lot of problems with your health. Now, as a chiropractor and I treat, you know, my team of doctors and I treat a ton of patients. Um, and so we see a lot of patients and over the years, I've been doing this for over 32 years now, I've been in practice, we treat a lot of people and many times patients come in and we're trying to figure out what their problem is. We, you know, we're always, we're all investigators on every patient. And as a chiropractor, you look for neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, pinched nerves, digestive problems, maybe they have acid reflux, we got to massage their stomach, it may be pushed up against their diaphragm. And so we can do uh, a lot of things physically and chemically. We can work with the nutrition. We put them on supplements like Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source. And most patients are very, very thrilled with the results. They're just excited as they can be. But every now and then, we have to dig a little deeper. We have to find out what else is going on. And so we look for little clues. I teach my doctors this when they join our team, is if a patient comes into the office and they are very early for their appointment, and they're willing to sit in the office for a long time and let other patients go ahead of them, oh, no, go ahead. You you go ahead first. Go ahead. That might be a sign that these people, uh, this is their social interaction for the day. And they actually just want to be around people. So they'll just sit in a reception area and wait. And then we go into the room and they'll start talking. And they don't just talk about their situation. They'll talk about almost, uh, I want to say irrelevant things. It's relevant to them, but it's irrelevant to their health. But they just want to talk. They finally have some social interaction. 
So in cases like that, I teach my doctors that we may have to sit down with the patient and say, hey, what's going on in your life? Do you have a social network? And if not, we can give some advice on how to build a social network. And I'll, I'll talk about that a little later. So if the patient is having high blood pressure, uh, being lonely can uh, raise blood pressure by 14 points with a greater increase uh, the longer the loneliness persists. With that, the risk of heart disease and dementia starts to increase. So now we have to be little investigators and we may have to play therapist a little bit and say, what can we do about this? And I had a patient come in a while ago. Uh, she lives with her daughter, but the daughter said to me, listen, mom used to go out on Wednesdays to church and now she doesn't even feel like doing that anymore. And the mother's depressed. And I said, okay, so what would it take to get you to go out on Wednesdays again? And she, we talked a little bit. And I said, can you make this commitment for me? Can you go this Wednesday? I'm not asking for anything in the future. Can you just make a commitment to go this Wednesday? And she said, well, I said, please do the commitment for me. She said, okay. So she came back in after Wednesday and I said, how'd it go? And she said, oh, it went very well. And I said, did you enjoy it? Yeah, I hadn't been there in a while. And I saw some friends I hadn't seen in a while. And I said, okay, so how about next Wednesday? You think we can do it again? And we slowly had to bring her out of her social isolation, and that led to depression, and so now she's doing much better. So little things like that, as a doctor, we try to work on not just the spine and the nervous system and the digestive system. We try to intercede, if we can, gently, to try to get the person well. Researchers concluded social isolation and loneliness are more severe, uh, have more severe consequences than obesity and smoking. Other recent research reveals that brain-related changes associated with feelings of loneliness can start taking place in as little as 24 hours of isolation. Now, as a chiropractor, my team of doctors and I, our goal is to make sure your brain and your nervous system are working the best it possibly can. So we can give you the best chiropractic care in the world, and you could be eating the best diet in the world. But if there's some social issues, we may have to address those as well. So the reason I'm doing this show today is I want you to start thinking, do I have this? Many times, and it doesn't matter how old you are, by the way. I've known people young, 30 years old, 40 years old. And after work, they, they would go for a run maybe. Okay, and I'd say, would you go to the gym? No, oh, well, I used to go to the gym, but I just like going for a run now. And after work, they're totally socially isolated, and it started to lead some real serious problems. Hey, we got a big party coming up. Want to go? And there's one gal I'm thinking of. She was single and nice-looking girl. And I said, hey, you know, there's no reason not to go out is what I'm saying. And I said, uh, you know, you want to go out? No, I don't think so. A bunch of my friends are going, you know, whatever, doing this this weekend on a movie. You want to go? No, I don't think so. And then I started realizing there's a problem here. And so we had to sit down powwow. This is years ago. And uh, she realized that, yeah, I really do have a problem. I didn't even know it was there, but it was getting worse and worse. So we kind of got her out of that little funk there. But as a chiropractor, again, I want to make sure your nervous system is working the best it possibly can. And that means your brain needs to be stimulated. Your brain needs three things. It needs oxygen, stimulation, and nutrition. And if your brain isn't getting all three of those things, it's not going to work properly. So the brain controls everything. So we want to make sure that the brain is doing the best it possibly can. So we look at the patient and we say, okay, what can we do to stimulate your brain? Well, you know, you, there's the standard things you can do, uh, video, you know, you can play games or puzzles or uh, uh, like Sudoku or uh, crossword puzzles. But then I'll say, are you doing anything else? No, because I'm not a big fan of those things, let's say. So for me, I like to learn things. My big thing is I would listen to other speakers. I will go to the science channels on TV and watch them. And so I tell people, listen, go to my website, drjoesposito.com, and listen to my radio shows. We've got hundreds of hours of radio shows archived on the website. Listen to them. And you'll just put it in the background if you have to. And what, I, what that'll do is it'll start to stimulate your brain because it's putting new information constantly into the brain. If you're a visual learner, we videotape all my live lectures. Go to my website. Again, drjoesposito.com. Watch the videos. Because the videos, if you're a visual learner, will then stimulate the brain. And a lot of things in healthcare are physical, not chemical. And what I mean by that is, as a chiropractor, we work on getting the spine lined up properly. Uh, some of my videos, I show you how to do something called a cross crawl. And that activates and stimulates the brain. And it's, I have a chapter on that in my new book, which is Prescription for Extreme Health. And we talk about exercises you can do to stimulate the brain. Because if you're walking with your hands in your pockets, not a good idea. You want to swing your arms, and here's how you do it. The right side of the brain controls the left side of the body. The left side of the brain controls the right side of the body. So when you walk, I want you swinging right arm, left leg, left arm, right leg. Right arm, left leg, left arm, right leg. Now, here's how you test if you're doing it right. 
Stand up. If you have an opportunity to do it, you can do it right now. If you're driving or something, don't do that. Not a good idea. Wait till you're in a safe place where you can stand up and start marching. Exaggerated. Swinging your arms and your legs. And is your right arm and left leg coming up together? And then is your left arm and right leg coming up together? If it's not, that means the brain, we call it switched. There's lack of a better word. We just call it switched. And you have to focus. I want you to bring your right elbow to your left knee. Bring up your knee and your elbow. Bring your left elbow to your right knee. And you may have to focus to unswitch your brain so that you naturally start using the right and left side of the brain together. Your brain is designed to be integrated, not segregated. Segregated means you're using one side and then the other. Integrated means you're using both sides equally. When the brain is segregated, the brain is stimulated. And that's one of the three things your brain needs, oxygen, stimulation, and nutrition. As you're marching, you're going to start breathing just a little heavier. That's going to increase your oxygen. And then you need the proper nutrition. And that's where nutrition comes in. Things like Dr. Joe Supergreens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, eating more plants, eating a salad every day, getting the brain functioning with the proper nutrition. Now, as a chiropractor, we always look at the neck because you may have pinched nerves in the neck that go up into the brain. And there's also an artery in the back of your brain called the basovatibular artery. And if, that, if the bones in the neck are out of place, you could be putting pressure on one of the two major blood supplies to the brain, the carotid arteries and the basovatibular. And so that's why chiropractic care not only helps with back pain and neck pain, but it stimulates the nerves and it can open up the blood supply to certain areas. Because the nerves and the blood supply tra- wrap around each other and they travel together. So if you have a pinched nerve, you also have a pinched blood vessel. And now you're not getting the proper oxygen and the proper nutrients to the body. So there can be a physical component that's associated with the loneliness and the social isolation because you just don't feel like doing anything. We've all done that, right? You're laying in bed or it's, it's a Sunday and you, it, you have no plans and you're thinking, I should get up and clean the house. I should get up and do some yard work and eh, I'll do it next time. And then you just don't get around to it. That's okay. It's okay to give yourself a little mental break, but when it becomes a lifestyle, that's where it becomes an issue. So many times when we get people eating the right foods, we get them off the, what I call the seven deadly sins, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. We get them on good foods like fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. We get them on supplements. Some people have burned out adrenal glands. We got to get them on adrenal supplements. Some people need digestive enzymes. Um, at least Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source, absolute the least thing you should do every day when it comes to nutrition, they start to feel better. They, have, they feel better. They want to start to socialize. Sometimes it's pain that prevents you from going out and doing things. We've all been there. I, I know I have. you got a blazing headache. You don't feel like going to a party. you got back pain. You don't feel like going dancing or just sitting around in a movie or just going out with your friends to dinner or just going for a walk. And so the pain can lead to loneliness and social isolation, which can then lead to things like high blood pressure, heart disease, cancer. So not leading... To it contributing to it I should say so there's a lot of different things that can be related to your social isolation and your loneliness so the things you have control over right away are what you eat stop eating the alcohol meat sugar dairy coffee soda and artificial sweetener stop saying I'm gonna give myself a treat because I've had a good day no the treat is when your body is healthy the treat is when you're down to the weight you should be your basal metabolic index is where it should be that's your treat The ice cream, the cookies, the cakes, the donuts, that's not a treat because when you do those things, they stimulate a part of your brain called the nucleus acubens, which releases dopamine, which gives you pleasure. And so instead of getting pleasure from social interaction, you're now turning to a drug. You're turning to sugar. Maybe it's alcohol. Maybe it is drugs. And when the body starts doing that, it's a lot easier to eat ice cream than it is to go out for a walk. And what happens is... You say, well, I I didn't get the high I got from the walk, but it was a whole lot easier, so I'm just going to eat more ice cream or more sugar or more cakes. And so the social isolation can be a, a, a factor or byproduct of you artificially stimulating yourself and then not feeling like doing things. So it's important you get the nervous system working. It's important you get the digestive system working, and it's important that you have proper nutrition. And in a second, I'm going to talk about the digestive system because this really is a key. And uh, I'm, I, I'm a regular guest on several other shows. And one of the shows I'm on, uh, my friend Eric Von Hessler's show, he, uh, he says, everything goes back to, to, diet, to, to digestion with you, doesn't it? And I was like, yeah, it kind of does. Because if you're not breaking your food down properly, you're not absorbing your nutrients. And so if you have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, that can be a sign 
that the body isn't working properly. So, folks, if you want to make an appointment, come see us. If you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, if you've ever been in a car accident, if the car was damaged, you were damaged 100% of the time. I want you to go to my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe with the number one Dr. Joe in the world, and we'll set you up a time to come see us. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. And we accept people with all insurances. We accept people without insurance. Uh, we accept car accidents, sports injuries, workers' comp, children. Please, please, please bring your children in to get checked because if the spine is straight, they grow straight. And if the spine is crooked, they grow crooked. And I wish, if I could change one thing in my life for all the ups and downs we've had in my life, I would wish that I'd gotten chiropractic care as a child because my spine would have been straighter and it would have led to so many other things in my life that would have made life a lot easier. Now, I may not be here. Of course, every everything in your life leads to the next thing. I might not be here, here helping you, but pain-wise, health-wise, I would absolutely positively recommend everybody get their spine checked, including children. So again, if you want to make an appointment, drjoesposito.com or just Google Dr. Joe with the number one Dr. Joe in the world, and you can do that. Now, on my website, and we're going to get to uh, the digestive issue in just a, a moment, on the website, we archive our radio shows and our videos, so if you miss some of this show, if you're driving, you have to get out of your car, if you want to hear the whole rebroadcast, it's going to be on my website. Uh, go under media, then you'll see Dr. Joe's radio shows, and then just look up to date, and listen to the other shows, too. We have hundreds of hours of shows there, and we have thousands and thousands of people go to my website from all around the world every, every month. Because there's so much good information there. And you know what? I don't charge you for these either. It's my gift to you. Why? Because this is healthcare that really, really works. And we want to be your doctors, whether in person or at least as your coach. All that's on the website, drjoesposito.com. So we're talking today about social isolation and loneliness and how that actually affects your health worse than obesity and smoking 15 cigarettes a day. So it's really important you start to think about this. Do I have this condition? And you start to ask yourself, well, do I socialize a lot? Do I rather, rather stay home on the weekends? And is it affecting my life? I don't feel like going out tonight, although it's a really good party or it's, I, I, you know, my friend is in town and I don't want to go meet her or him because I just don't feel like doing it. When it starts to adversely affect your life is when you have to start saying, I got a problem and I've got to address it. So according to the American Osteopathic Association, a commission to Harris Poll, loneliness plays a role in chronic health conditions, including pain. And again, as a chiropractor, my team of doctors, we address pain all day, every day, drug or alcohol abuse and depression. Recent studies have linked loneliness to an increase in the risk of Alzheimer's, heart, heart attack and stroke and lower survival rates for breast cancer patients. Studies also show that people who are lonely are more likely to experience high levels of stress, poor sleep, increased inflammation and reduced immune function. This is why it's important to stay healthy. Because if you're staying healthy, you're less likely to get sick. And if you're sick, of course, you don't want to socialize. But that could be your excuse. Well, I had a cold two weeks ago. I just haven't gotten out over it yet. I still feel a little under the weather. And that's why it's important to eat the right foods, especially as winter rolls in. The immune system is now more compromised. So you want to stay away from things like alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener. Eat more fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. At least take Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Chances are you need more supplements than that. I take more supplements than that, but that's the minimum. And also, especially in the winter, I want you to consider taking vitamin D3, not vitamin D2. That's the synthetic version, vitamin D3. I'm about 191 pounds. Yeah, that's about, I'm telling the truth there. Um, so I take about 5,000 international units a day. Most adults, regardless if you're, you know, even if you're 98 pounds, you can still do about 5,000 international units a day um, because you have to take a lot of vitamin D to overdose. If I'm out in the sun, if I have a, a tank top on, let's say in shorts, and I'm out in the sun for 20 minutes, I'm going to get about 20,000 international units of vitamin D. So I'm not going to overdose by being in the sun. And the stuff you take is less absorbable than the ones you make from the sun. So you have to take an awful lot of vitamin D to overdose. That's why I recommend at least 5,000 international units a day. Helps the immune system work, helps build bone mass, it helps the brain function normally. It's really important. And if you have pain, pain can lead to the body just not wanting to do things. And that's why as, a chiropr as chiropractors, my team of doctors, we work real hard to try to get you well. Because we want to make sure that your body is pain-free, but pain is a warning sign. 
And this is something I want you to consider. If you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, headaches, that is a siren going off. Something's wrong. Fix me. Otherwise, you wouldn't have the pain. So you can feel pain and have a problem. Now, you cannot feel pain and have a problem, too. I mean, high blood pressure doesn't hurt. Diabetes doesn't hurt. Cancer doesn't hurt. Again, in its early stages, these things. So you can have a problem and not even know it. That's why it's important to get yourself checked. And one thing people seem to forget about checking is the nervous system. So the question is then, why is loneliness becoming increasingly prevalent? Why is it becoming a bigger problem in our society? And here's a couple of reasons. And you probably fit into one or more of these categories. Long work hours, use of social media, suppressing face-to-face interactions. I mean, you have to, you know, if you ever see uh, the younger generation, it's not like the old man now, there's young kids, but they sit at the table, wherever it is, and they're texting somebody else. They're not talking to the person next to them. And so social media can be a problem because you, you become socially isolated from one-on-one contact. You frequent travel for work, living far away from family, delaying marriage or f- totally foregoing marriage. I wouldn't be surprised if we see in the next few generations that marriage becomes a thing of the past. Because people are now independent, they can raise themselves, they have their own money. And so it'd be interesting to see, and again, I'm, I'm not a sociologist, I'm not making a statement here, I'm making a, a, an observation um, that it may become a thing of the past. More and more people are living alone, and that becomes a, that can become a problem. So in light of the growing population of seniors, that's another problem we have to discuss, and the rising prevalence of social isolation in general, we need to tackle loneliness on both an individual basis and from a society. Because it's another issue people are living longer. Many times if they are married for long times, I know my father passed away and my mom uh, is alone, has been for many years, and it becomes an issue and what do you do about it? The, my parents' generation usually got married younger. That was more of a traditional thing. They spent their whole lives together, 40, 50 years married. A spouse passes away. The children are grown. What do we do? And so seniors oftentimes just kind of revert back to, well, I'm just going to stay home today. I've heard this before. Why get out of bed? I got nothing to do. So I sleep now till 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. I get up. I have a lunch. I do something, maybe run some errands or watch some TV. And I like to go to bed early. And so now suddenly you're sleeping maybe more than you're awake. And that can be, he- be a his- health issue as well. Once again, the body needs to be in motion. The brain needs in, in, uh, 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 stimulation. And physical stimulation is also mental stimulation. So sitting around can be extremely dangerous. So we have to do things. A couple of things I'm happy with, let's talk about some good things here, is uh, social skills, training children in social skills. Trying to not have the bullies, break up the bullies, try to get people to interact. We're seeing a lot more of that in schools, and I'm very happy to say that I, that I think that's a good thing, that children are interacting. Children are now going to daycare, early, pre-K. Well, they're learning how to interact. So hopefully this is nature's way of balancing out social isolation and social media because they are learning to interact earlier. I, I went to kindergarten. I had one friend, you know, Matt, uh, Steve Yamato. And I, me and Stevie lived in the same apartment house in Hoboken, New Jersey, and he was my one friend when I was young until I went to kindergarten. I remember my mother walking me to school and me looking at all these kids going, whoa, there's a whole bunch of these kids here. Where they all come from? I didn't know there were other kids aside from me and Stevie. So there may be a good part to that as well. I think that training doctors to incorporate social connectedness and evaluations, like we just talked about, I train my doctors to look for these things. Because if a patient has that problem, we certainly want to address it. And then give them options, which I'll do. I, upcoming, I'm going to start talking about things you can do um, to help with social, social interactions. And you can do it for yourself. You can also do it for your friends, your family, and certainly for seniors as well. Now, folks, if you want to make an appointment, uh, again, we're chiropractors. So if you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, acid reflux, heartburn, constipation, diarrhea, nutritional advice, we want to be your doctors. We want the opportunity to prove to you that there might be an alternative. A lot of people come to us for second and third opinions. I've been told I need this and this. Is there an alternative to that? Sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. If you need surgery, I'll say, hey, you need surgery. You need to take medication. But if there's an alternative, I want to at least let you know that it's there. We accept people with all insurances, people with no insurance, car accidents, sports injuries. I've never seen a car damaged ever with the occupant's warrant. And I don't care if the accident was today or yesterday or if it was 50 years ago. Sooner you get things fixed, the better it's going to be and the less damage, long-term damage you're going to have. 
So go to our website. You can do that. If you have questions, send them to me through the website. I'm more than happy to answer your questions. DrJoeEsposito.com or just Google Dr. Joe with the number one Dr. Joe in the world. You can also order Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source as well. Hey, tell your friends about the show. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. Hey, folks, thanks for staying around. I appreciate that. If you're just joining us, welcome. Glad you could be here. And we're talking today about something that's more dangerous to your health than obesity and smoking. And that would be social isolation and loneliness. And it's a real serious issue. And it's becoming more of an issue because we have things to entertain us. You know, again, I sound like the old man. When I was a kid, we went out and we played. We didn't have cartoons except for Saturday mornings. I know I sound like the old man now. But you went out and you played and you interacted. And I had cousins that I played with. And I had, a, like I said, my friend when I was really little, just I lived in Hoboken, New Jersey. There was one other kid in the apartment house. Oh, Mario Giudice. I forgot about Mario. That's right. Stevie Amato, Mario Giudice. Can you tell I hung out with a lot of Italians? And we all three, we, we hung out and played together. And then as we got older, of course, I, I moved to the suburbs. I was living in Hoboken, and it was a really dangerous time, actually. So we moved to the suburbs. And you'd go out and you'd just wander around. You, you'd go call for somebody. That was the phrase we used. I'm going to call for, for Kurt. I'm going to call for, for Tom. You ring the bell, and you go out and play. So there was social interaction because we didn't have social media. We didn't have video games. What else were you going to do? Get out of the house. And now we're in-house more. And that becomes more of an issue because it may give your brain stimulation, which is important for brain function, but it's not giving your body stimulation. So things we need to do is address some of these issues. And I remember when I was studying for my diplomate in orthopedics, uh, I'm board certified in chiropractic, orthopedics, pain management. I'm double board certified in nutrition. And I remember my teacher, Rick Ackerman, saying, you can't diagnose it if you don't know it exists. And so you might think that you're just shy. You might think that you're introverted, when in reality, you may be stuck in this social isolation uh, issue that you need to address. So you have to know it exists. And think about that. You know, do you, if there are things that are happening that might be fun, but you decide not to go. I don't feel like going out. I'm tired. I'm bored. I'm, uh, I, I work too hard this week. Every now and then, that's okay. But it becomes a lifestyle or pattern that becomes serious. And again, as a chiropractor, I want to make sure you're getting the optimum health. Make sure you're getting proper nutrition. Make sure you're getting proper stimulation to the brain. If you have pinched nerves, unpinch them. If you have acid reflux, heartburn, we may have to massage or pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm. And that's an adjustment, the chiropractic adjustment we do, that works extremely well for getting the body fixed. Because so many times healthcare problems are physical, not chemical. And we keep trying to treat them chemically. This is the shortcoming when it comes to healthcare. And this will change. It has to change because it can't go on like this forever. Eventually, the world is going to catch up. I remember years ago, I was uh, talking about margarine and how dangerous margarine is, uh, hydrogenated oils, and how hydrogenated oils are probably the number one cause of heart disease because the hydrogenation, it, it creates free radicals, and the free radicals attack the heart muscle. Anyway. So I was talking about it in a lecture. And uh, my mother had actually come to my lecture at that time. I think I was lecturing up in New York at that time. And a couple of weeks later on CNN, they had a story saying that margarine is probably the number one cause of heart disease and margarine is a hydrogenated oil. And so my mother called me up and she said, I'm not sure if you're a nut or a, po a prophet. I haven't quite figured it out yet. And I said, probably a little bit of both, mom. And she said, she says, I've seen over the years, you talk about things and I think you're crazy. And then it becomes mainstream. So the things we're talking about now, the treatments that we're offering to our patients now will become mainstream because 30 years ago, 35 years ago, chiropractors were quacks. They were crazy. They were, they, they were witch doctors. Now, chiropractors are teaching in medical school. Medical doctors are teaching chiropractic school. I've been offered several times to teach in medical schools and chiropractic schools. I just don't have the time. But I remember I was at a, a seminar not long ago, and this one student ran up to me, big guy. Ran up to me, threw his arms around me, and he hugged me. He says, I want to thank you for everything you do. I learn more from your radio show than I do in school. He says, if you would come teach at the university, you would be the number one asset this university would have to offer. And I went, wow, that's quite a compliment. He says, no, Dr. Joe. He says, everyone loves your shows. All the students listen to your shows. Doctors listen to your shows. And again, I'm not bragging. I'm just letting you know that this is going to be the trend. And you might as well jump on a bandwagon now, number one, because it's cool. And number two, I don't want it to be too late for you. So let's talk about some strategies you can use to address loneliness. 
So if you struggle with loneliness, you're certainly not alone. And this is funny because so many people that are lonely, especially seniors, say, I wish I had a friend. Or with seniors, their friend or their spouse passes away. And now I don't have any other friends. And there's so many people sitting at home wishing that they had somebody to hang out with. And there's all these other people wishing the same things. So we got to somehow get these people together. It's a not necessarily a dating service, but it's a social interaction service. So a couple of things. Join a club. Proactive approaches to meeting others includes joining things like a club, planning get-togethers with a family, friends, or neighbors. Invite people over. Hey, listen, man, I got this new recipe. I want to try it out. Can you come over and let me know what you think? One thing that works great, and I'm going to teach you some skills that you can use here, is ask people for their advice. You know what, Tim? Uh, I, I, I just uh, I found this new recipe for, I don't know, uh, veggie tacos or something. I don't know. Can you come over and tell me what you think? People love that. Everyone wants to hear themselves talk. And so people love it when you ask for their help. And no, don't overdo it, of course. I want you to come over and mow my lawn and put a new roof on and chase the squirrels out of the attic. It's simple things. I need your opinion on this. What do you think? Uh, websites called meetup.com is an online source. Uh, you can locate a bunch of clubs and get-togethers. Uh, I'm a vegan. I haven't had animal products in over 30 years. So I joined a few groups, Facebook groups and, and groups. I don't think I'd have enough time, if I, if I, even if I wasn't working and the hours that I do, to go to all the events that I get invited to. There's meetups, there's restaurant get-togethers, there's yoga classes, there's uh, lectures, there's seminars. Uh, some of them I'm not interested in, of course, most of them I'm not. But if I wanted to get out, I would certainly have that option. So let's assume you're Italian, which I am. Maybe you want to join Italian-American meetup. Maybe you're, uh, uh, you like, uh, I don't know, square dancing or something. You want to go to a square dance club. So you can find things to do and do it. And the cool part about the meetups is you can go alone. And here's the thing. I had a student come into my office the other day, and she wanted to follow me around, follow my doctors around. And we did, and she was shy. So she said she was shy. English was her second language, so she had an accent. And a very pretty girl, very smart girl. So it's not like you can say, well, uh, you know, people don't talk to me because I have bad hair or something. I don't know. And she said, I'm a little shy. And I, she said, I don't go out much. And I said, okay, so here's the thing I want you to try doing. When you meet somebody... Here's my secret. It's my secret because I'm, I'm not a very social person. When I go to parties, I'm not big on carry on on conversations. But I have a technique I use, and I'm going to share it with you. Three questions. My secret, and I want it to be your secret because it works real well. Three questions. So whenever you meet somebody, hi, nice to meet you. Barbara, Joan, nice to see you. Oh, nice to see you, Joe. So, Joan, where are you from? Simple break the ice question. Oh, well, I'm from, let her talk. Joan wants to hear herself talk. Well, I'm from, uh, I'm from Hoboken, New Jersey. And I thought, oh, really? That's interesting because I grew up in Hoboken. Really? Oh, you're probably going to find something in common. And you'll say, oh, I have a friend in wherever, Los Angeles. Do you know Johnny Rizzo? No, I don't know Johnny Rizzo. Oh, interesting. So that's interesting. What brought you to Los Angeles or Hoboken or whatever it is? Well, I'm a, I was an actress. I was a makeup artist, whatever, and I did this. Oh, that's, a, that's very interesting. Really, Makeup, that sounds really interesting. What got you into that? I just asked three questions. Joan or whoever it is are just off on it. They're just loving you. They think you're the coolest, most charming person they ever met in their lives. And they can go on and on and on. And if somebody joins the group, you then can introduce them. Okay, John, this is Joan. Joan's from Hoboken or whatever, and, and she's a makeup artist. Oh, really? That's very interesting. And now you started the conversation for them. So you can be the leader even if you're, quote, shy. Because look what's happening. You're not doing the talking. They are. And so you just transfer that project, that job of talking, and this is going to get you out of the house and allow you to start to socialize more. And again, if you have neck pain or back pain or acid reflux or heartburn or you can't get out of the house for that reason, well, that's what my other shows are about, how to fix those things. But this is how to deal with social anxiety. And it's not hard. It's actually pretty easy. You can take educational classes. Gosh, I really want to learn how to make... I don't know, vegetarian cupcakes or something. Well, there's so many sources out there that you can turn to for classes. Some of them you have to pay for. Some of them you're not. But the nice part about an education class is you can go by yourself. You don't have to uh, 
uh, be part of, be be with somebody to do it. But again, as your doctor, I want you to get well. And so I may have to coach you a little bit on how to do these things. You might want to consider what we call a digital cleanse. Because so many of us get so wrapped up in social media, I'm as guilty as anyone else. It is addicting, and studies have shown that with social media, it stimulates the dopamine receptor sites in your brain, and you get pleasure from it. And so it's a quick, easy, cheap, legal way to get high. I'm just going to scroll through Facebook for a few hours. And I, I, it's okay. It's okay to be in touch with what's happening. It's a news source. Many times Facebook has things on the news faster than the news has things on the news. But you have to realize there has to be a, a limit to these things. So you may have to do a social media cleanse or a digital cleanse. And if you need that, go to my website, drjoesposito.com. Order one or both of my books, Eating Right for the Health of It and Prescription for Extreme Health. Easy reading. When those books were written, the goal was to make it easy reading that you could stop at any time. Put it down, pick it up, and then continue on. Because I found a lot of people, when I interviewed people about reading, well, if, some people would sit and le- read a novel and just go on and on and on and on and on. I, like, I made my books choppy. So it's little segments so you can digest, no pun intended, a little bit of the segment, move on to the next segment. So that's kind of neat. Exercise with others. Get out of the house. Go join a gym. Once again, these are things you can do by yourself if you're shy or have uh, social issues. Uh, you or have anxiety, you can go to the gym and work out and you'll at least you'll be around other people. And it's good for you. And when you're around other people, inevitably somehow, somewhere, you're going to start to talk to somebody. Hey, man, you done with that, that, that machine? Yeah, okay, can I step in? Sure. Okay, guess what? You just had social interaction. How cool is that? Don't be weird, though. I know when I go to the gym, I don't want people talking to me if I just stepped out of the shower, if they just stepped out of the shower. There's a little, got to be a little privacy in there, too. Uh, talking to strangers, my mother is the princess of this. She will talk to somebody about anything, and she'll say, oh, oh, I've never saw, oh, you're buying that new whatever it is, broccoli, whatever. I never saw that before. How do you cook that? Start a conversation. Once again, what do you do? Three questions, and here's my other tip for being good at, at, at social interactions. Compliment the object, not the person. So what does that mean? If I see somebody... Guy or girl, doesn't matter, and I want to start a conversation or just just interact with them. You can say, that is a really cool shirt, or those are beautiful earrings. Now, if I walked up to a woman and I said, wow, you were really pretty, it's a little creepy, isn't it? You know, security, have this man arrested. But if I walk up to somebody and say, those are really cool earrings, wow. Is there a story behind them? No, there isn't. Oh, yes, there is, as a matter of fact. These are my grandmother's. Or, oh, these old things, I just got them at a thrift store. But you can compliment the object, not the person. And people love to be complimented. Those are really cool glasses. Great shoes. Wow. Don't compliment the person because that's freaky. So that's going to help you as well uh, to get out of your social isolation and try to get into uh, doing things. So we want to talk about now some ways to break the anxiety that you might have. Because again, this show's a little different. If you listen to my shows before, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito, if you're just tuning in. I always talk about uh, health and nutrition and bio- neurophysiology and biochemistry. Today we're talking about more of a, a social issue that can adversely affect your health. We're talking about loneliness and social isolation. And a lot of things can lead to it. And many times, the reason I chose this topic is because there's a health component that needs to be addressed. I can't go out because I get headaches and I can't go to loud uh, venues or I can't go to places with people talking loud because it bothers my uh, whatever. I can't sit a lot because I have back pain. So here it ties right into what we talk about all the time. Eat the right food. Stay away from alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. Eat more fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Take supplements. In today's society, even organic foods, the soils are depleted. They're not as good as they were 30, 50, 60 years ago. That's why I believe everyone should take supplements. At least take Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. They're two powders. I have it sitting right in front of me in the studio here. Uh, I mix them together with coconut milk or almond milk, and you can make it dilute. You could make it more concentrated. Determine what flavors you like and if if it's too strong, if it's too weak. And it's up to you how you want to do it. But it's one serve, one scoop of essential sources, about 10 servings of raw fruits and vegetables with prebiotics, probiotics, digestive enzymes, a complete multivitamin. So if you're not eating your raw fruits and vegetables like you're supposed to, even if you are, at least do the super greens and the essential source. Relatively inexpensive. Most people after just a couple of days say, I don't know how I lived without these things. 
They are just amazing. I feel so much better than I ever have. And then inevitably, you're going to forget. Or you're going to be away from them. You're going to run out. You order, you've got to order them. And you're going to say, wow, I'm starting to feel a little tired today. I just got a little brain fog. I just don't have the energy that I used to have. To get, the order comes in. People are like, oh, my gosh, thank you, thank you, thank you. So at least give your body some nutrients that it needs in order to heal as well. Because, again, with, my, with our chiropractic patients, we have patients that have damaged vertebrae or, or discs that are swollen. We got to give them the raw materials so that the body can heal. Even if we give them the best chiropractic care in the world, if we're not giving them the raw materials to rebuild the disc or the joint or the ligament or the muscle, it's not going to respond as quickly. And most people don't get the results that they really hoped for or, or the, the results that they could have gotten. So, folks, if you want to make an appointment to come see us, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. Uh, we can do chiropractic work. We can check your digestive system. We can talk about diet. Go to my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world, and we will set you up a time to come see us. We accept people with most insurance. Well, we, regardless, we accept you as a patient. And one lady came in the other day, and she said, well, you, you know, my insurance doesn't cover what you're doing. I said, no, your insurance does cover what we're doing. You have coverage. However, you have a $6,000 deductible. So we usually will work with the patient the best we can to meet their insurance meet needs and get them in as patients. If a patient wants to co get it, come in and get well and everybody's reasonable, we can arrange things for them. So if you want to make an appointment, drjoesposito.com, just Google Dr. Joe. I have never seen a car accident where the car was damaged where the occupants weren't. So it's important that if you've been in an accident ever, you get your spine checked. Bring your kids in. Kids need to be checked. Stop suffering needlessly. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired and you want to get well, go to my website right now. Make an appointment. You can do it online or call us, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. So I want to cover, as we start to wrap things up here, some anxiety busters, things that you can do to help with your anxiety, because anxiety is oftentimes associated with loneliness uh, and social isolation, which is then associated with high blood pressure, diabetes, increased heart disease, increased Alzheimer's chances, increased risk of breast cancer and other cancers. So it all ties together. So let's, once again, get to the cause of the problems and not just treat the symptoms. Number one, you're going to hate me for this one. You got to get rid of the caffeine. By lowering your caffeine load even a little bit, it's going to take a lot of stress off the body because coffee doesn't give you energy. Coffee stops you from getting tired. Does that make sense? So what happens is there's a chemical in your brain called adenosine. Adenosine is released and gets absorbed at what's called adenosine receptor sites. And the adenosine receptor sites then make you uh, are stimulated and it makes you tired. Caffeine looks like adenosine, so it blocks up the adenosine receptor sites so you don't absorb the caffeine so you don't get tired. And so what happens is your body's smarter than you, by the way. It says, wait, I have to have, get tired. I have to rest. And so what the brain does, it produces more adenosine receptor sites, which in turn... Uh, makes you absorb more adenosine, which makes you tired, which then you want to drink more coffee. So that's where the mess comes in. So we don't want that happening, so you need to cut back the caffeine. If you're going to do coffee, I beg of you, I'm on my knees pleading with you, please only do organic. Because coffee is one of the most highly sprayed foods there is when it comes to pesticides and chemicals. And we don't want those chemicals being absorbed into your body. Getting enough sleep is vital. And it's, sometimes it's tough. I was talking to one of my colleagues, and radio and TV is kind of weird hours sometimes. And he just uh, got a new time slot. And he was excited with his new time slot. And so he couldn't sleep very well. And I said, well, let me give you some tips. Number one, if you wake up and pee a lot, and as sometimes we get older, it becomes more of an issue, stop drinking a lot of fluids right around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. This way, you pee a lot of them out by the time you go to bed. Don't eat three hours before you go to bed. If you're going to do caffeine or stimulants only in the morning so that they can work through your system and not keep you awake, make sure your room is dark. Put up blackout shades. If you don't have blackout shades, uh, or uh, get a mask. You can buy little masks at the drugstore for a couple of dollars. Wear a mask so that it's dark and you sleep better because when you sleep, your, your brain releases chemicals. Um, the pineal gland produces chemicals that help you sleep. If you have light comes in, even with your closed eyes, it'll stop the production of what's called melatonin. You could take something like magnesium oil or magnesium supplements, and magnesium helps relax your muscles. Be careful with magnesium because too much magnesium 
can cause diarrhea. That's what they make milk of magnesia out of. Oh, and most people are magnesium deficient. If you don't eat a lot of nuts and seeds, chances are you're magnesium deficient. You can take essential oils like lavender oil and rub it on the bottom of your feet or even uh, magnesium oil. And it gets absorbed into your body very quickly and can help you relax. So those are some tricks you can do. Keep the room at the right temperature, 68 to 72 degrees. Keep it dark. Don't wake up and pee. Noise, of course. If you can't block out the noise, wear earplugs. So there's several things you can do to sleep. Some people have trouble if there's a screen in their room, whether it's a computer screen or a TV screen. You might have to move the screen. And especially with younger generation, I know kids like to sneak up to their rooms with their uh, phones and their, their, their little pads and stuff and communicate with each other. So where we used to sneak up to our rooms and, you, you know, you try to call your friends, but of course you couldn't dial a phone. Your parents would hear it. They just now text each other till the wee hours of the morning. So it's another thing, too. If you have kids, you might want to say, OK, screens stay here in outside. Get the screens out of the room because there's something called electromagnetic frequencies. And electromagnetic frequencies are given off by things like cell phones, especially if it's on Wi-Fi, Um I've had people where you had to move their oh, clock radios are a thing of the past, but clock radio would give off electromagnetic frequencies. If you put your phone in your room because it's your alarm clock, I want you to put it on the other side of the room, far away from you. The further away, the less electromagnetic frequencies. And I've done shows in the past, and I'm sure I'll do one again in the future, on the dangers of electromagnetic frequency and what you can do about it. You got to make sure your hormones are right. There's a hormone called cortisol, and that surges when you're under stress. So cortisol causes you to go under stress, which then causes you to produce cortisol. Cortisol causes you to lay down fat. So when patients come in our office, we always check their adrenal glands. That's one of the things we check because the adrenal glands produce cortisol. If the adrenal glands are just out of control and wired, you may have to reboot the adrenals. And we do that chiropractically by adjusting the nerve supply to the adrenals if it's being pinched. There are certain acupuncture points I can show you to tap to help reboot the adrenals. And then we can get you on adrenal supplements to get the adrenals to heal. But some things you might have, if you have adrenals, you're tired all the time, bags under the eyes. How many people have that? Usually a sign of adrenal fatigue. Too much caffeine will burn out the adrenals. Stress will burn out the adrenals. Not sleeping will burn out the adrenals. And when the adrenals start producing things properly, cortisol is then released in the morning, which wakes you up. And as the day goes on, your cortisol levels start to drop. And then melatonin kicks in at night, which helps you sleep. That's a normal cycle. So many people have that cortisol level high throughout the day, it doesn't give the cortisol a chance to drop and it doesn't give the melatonin a chance to kick in. Make sure you're taking proper supplements. At least, what do I say all the time? Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. You can order them on my website, drjoesposito.com or just Google Dr. Joe, also available on Amazon if you have an Amazon account. That's the minimum amount of nutrients that you need every single day. I take them first thing in the morning. I take a scoop of each. I mix it together, shake it up with coconut milk, drink it. When I come to the studio, if I'm doing a lecture, if I'm doing a TV show, if I'm doing a, 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 an event, I may take a double dose. But once you start taking it, you give your body at least the minimum amount of nutrients, you're now motivated to do more. And that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about loneliness and isolation and how to get yourself healthy so that you can break the cycle of loneliness or social isolation. So make sure you're getting the proper amount of nutrients in the body. Have something raw at every meal. Broccoli, cucumbers, tomatoes, avocados. Have a salad at least once a day. One meal a day should be salad. And if we can get the cortisol levels down and the body working normally, now you have the ability to get well and stay well. And you're less likely to have social isolation or loneliness because now you have the tools to go out and get well. So again, I can give you the best chiropractic care in the world, and I can give you the best supplements in the world, but if your body is not functioning from a mental standpoint, it's going to adversely affect your health. And my goal is what? To naturally get you well and keep you well. been saying that for 30-some-odd years. I hope to say it for another 50 years, because that's what we want to do. We want to get you well and keep you well. Now, folks, if you want to make an appointment to come see us, we're chiropractors. We have uh, offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. We'll work with chiropractic, pain management, nutrition, digestion. If you have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, we can gently uh, adjust or massage the stomach down away from the diaphragm so you can start absorbing your nutrients better, producing neurotransmitters in the brain. I didn't even cover that in the shows today. But if you want to make an appointment, we accept people with all insurances, no insurances, car accidents, sports injuries. Go to my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world. 
uh, make an appointment online or call us. We have uh, a lot of archive radio shows, a lot of archive videos, articles that I've written. Sign up, send me my, send me your email address. I'll send you my newsletter. That's a lot of fun too. Real basic stuff. But I want to give you the tools to get well and stay well. But you got to help. And the way you help is make an appointment right now for you, your friends, your family, and children. Again, the website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. Tell your friends about the show. We'll catch you next time.